Senator. And, uh, as a matter of fact, interest rates have gone up some, but they started going up, as Mr. Truman very well knows, in March of 1951. And they have gone up since then, up until last June, and they've sort of stabilized now. To uh, get to another area of Mr. Truman's allegations, uh, you were also a member of the Public Works Committee, I believe, yes. and uh, as such, probably have something that you would care to say in answer to his charges that uh, matters of public domain are being taken away from the people uh, in the service of private interests, such as the Hell's Canyon Dam project on mm. the Snake River. Uh, something <laughs> to do with the St. Lawrence Seaway, although I don't believe he mentioned that specifically in his speech. Well, uh, I'm not, uh, haven't become in detail familiar with the Hell's Canyon Dam project. I simply uh, would refute any statement that anything is being taken away from the people. That, that is not uh, the case at all. Uh, it has long been the philosophy of this country that the, the duty of government is to do only those things for the people which the people cannot do for themselves. And where private companies uh, are able to do business, the government doesn't go and do the business. Now, uh, when uh, things have to be done, and private uh, business is not able to do it, then the time, and they must be done, then the government should do it. Some of the projects, some of the power that's been developed by government should have been developed by government. Now, in the case of the Hell's Canyon Dam, as I say, I'm not in detail familiar with that. But certainly I feel sure of one thing, that if that is an essential pro uh, project and the private interest can't do it, then I think it would be proper for the government to do it. The evidence seems to be so far from my slight familiarity with it that there are interests standing by, well qualified, well financed, well able to develop the power on that river, and uh, uh, that therefore it may be unnecessary for the government to do it. As One far the as the St. Lawrence Seaway is concerned, that's an entirely different question. It doesn't involve power. It doesn't now Not because the they've St. broken Lawrence it down. Seaway, no, yes, yeah. yes. That's, uh, that's another subject, though, and I, I think that a uh, project of that kind uh, regardless of its merits, should be held off as long as you can. As long as we have such a high rate of business activity, we don't want to superimpose on it a uh, big public works program. They should be held in reserve will you yield? when we need them. Will, you, will, will the senator yield for yes, just a second while I suggest that we broaden the subject yeah. uh, and discuss something that's on everybody's mind day in and day out, and that's the Cold War. Uh, are we fighting it effectively? Are we spending too much money on it? Uh, is it are, are we fighting it uh, in a hard or a soft way? What are your thoughts about it, sir? Well, I feel we've made very definite headway with, with respect to the Cold War, that uh, the uh, indecision and lack of purpose has been replaced by careful planning, which is characteristic of General Eisenhower's operations. We've had success. We have seen truce in Korea. We have seen at least a stoppage of the bloodshed. What may come out of it yet, we aren't sure, but certainly that's a plus for us. We've had, uh, uh, we've seen the food riots in East Berlin. We've seen the picture of a young man trying to fight a Russian attack with his bare hands, with a rock. with something a year ago you never believed you would have seen. Uh, we have uh, seen a great victory in Germany. That's a diplomatic victory for the United States, as well as for Adenauer. That's a victory in the Cold War. And uh, we have seen here, uh, the Congress cooperating with the President in such matters as uh, voting to send surplus foods to Europe, uh, legislation which will admit uh, into this country over the next couple of years uh, something over 200,000 refugees from behind the Iron Curtain. That was a Cold War bullet we were shooting there, and uh, a very effective one in the opinion of the managers of the Cold War. So that I say, uh, Mr. Morgan, I, I think we have made in the, just in this year uh, very marked and noticeable progress in connection with the Cold War. Included in that, too, should be uh, our efforts to uh, get at this subversion business within our own government. Which brings us down quickly to a final question, Senator Bush, and that is, what do you think is the decisive issue or issues in the 54 congressional elections? Very quickly. <laughs> well, or is that, uh, you ought to give me more than one minute for that. I'm sorry. But, uh, I would say that the decisive issue is going to be the record of the Eisenhower administration for the first two years, or you might say right up to now, next year. That's going to be the, the uh, record. It, 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 the Eisenhower administration in the Republican Congress has not had time this year to complete its program, to do full justice to the 
to the uh, planks in our own platform. You feel it, you feel it will stand on its own I merits. I feel that it will stand and Th stand successfully when that time comes. Thank you very much, Senator Bush. Yes, sir. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Lone Gene Chronoscope was Edward P. Morgan and Winston Burnett, both of the CBS Television News Time. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Prescott Bush, United States Senator of Connecticut.